Time for this. Ocean Drive's films on Thursdays with Eclipse Cinemas Gondoran, flying high to bring you the best films in Ireland. Eclipse. Well, it feels like yesterday, and it's Thursday once more. Well, we're both we're both at that age, Jamie, where time is going much faster than you'd want to. Although, in in a funny way, I was just thinking here, it's a rainy old day in Bundor, and you know it doesn't happen often, but it is. Oh, yeah. But well, look, you, you gotta you gotta stick up for the hometown. But one of the few advantages where I sit, usually last week the sun was coming right into my face. I can see you perfectly this week, so there is Absolutely. that the uh, silver lining to every cloud, I guess. Yeah, you had a good week of the movies because I'm looking at what we've got today. We've got the the woman in the window. We have the end of a sentence, which uh, I believe was made in Ireland. Yeah, and you've got oxygen in there. Now, kick off. Three interesting movies and <clears throat> on streaming service. We'll start with The Woman in the Window, which is the big one. Like, all you got to do is look at the cast. Amy Adams, Gary Oldman, Jennifer Jason Lee, uh, uh, Julianne Moore. Huge cast. It was a, a really big selling book as well. And when it was announced to be a movie, people were, were sure it's going to be a surefire hit. Um, Joe Wright is the director who made Atonement and also directed uh, Gary Oldman to his Oscar win in uh, The Darkest Hour. So sure, surely all the ingredients are there to make a really big hit. And it's the number one movie in Ireland this week. <clears throat> now, with streaming, number one is slightly different, isn't it? Because people will go, ah, sure, we'll watch this. It's, you know, it's a Tuesday night. I don't like the football. We'll put this on much more than they do when they, they're going out to the cinema. And, you know, I, Jamie, I don't know if you're much of a chef, but, you know, sometimes you have all the right ingredients and yet still the meal doesn't turn out right. And really, that's the case with this movie. It's, you know, it's not a bad movie. I think... It's just not a great movie. And if this was a kind of, you know, your Sunday afternoon thriller, uh, you know, made on home by for on the Hallmark Channel or something, you go, that's not bad. But with this cast, you kind of expect something a wee bit better. Now, I should say the, st the plot. So <clears throat> stop me if you've heard this before, because you certainly have. So there's a woman, she's housebound. She's got agoraphobia. Phobia. We know she, her life's a bit of a mess. She's drinking too much. She's taken some sort of medication. She's estranged from her family. And she seems to witness a crime across the road. So obviously you're thinking of things like Rear, rear Window, Disturbia yeah. and so on. And like, to be fair, the movie nods to this. And I believe the book does too. And in part, it's about a woman who's an unreliable neighbour. Not only are, are we not sure if she saw what she thinks she saw, you know, just like the girl on the train she doesn't know either now i think that might be the problem with this sometimes what's works brilliant in a book just doesn't work on a movie i'm reading an absolutely amazing book at the moment called the house on needless street last house on needless street and the book is narrated by this guy who we're not sure if he's a killer or not and his cat it's brilliant in a book i don't think it would work in a movie and i think this is the same so it's all right i bet you loads of people who are listening and saw it and they went oh, i thought it was okay and yeah it is okay but with a cast like that with multiple oscar winners you thought it'd be something special and it's it's really not and if like me you don't guess you know who the the killer is in the first 20 minutes you know i i'd be quite surprised but that that's not necessarily a bad thing just kind of yeah you know one of those things a bit disappointing Bit disappointing, but maybe I'm a wee bit harsh. Okay. Much, much more of a surprise was the next movie, which I hadn't heard of until I heard an interview on a on a movie podcast, and it's called End of Sentence, and it's about uh, two men <clears throat> bringing the back the ashes of their wife and mother to to Ireland. I think the, the, you've got a clip which might uh, sum it up a little bit for everyone. Who's that? It's nobody. Near the end, for Ma made me promise that you and I would take a trip and spread her ashes. I've come to say goodbye, Shani. Why would Mom want to be buried in Ireland anyway? I don't know. Some things you don't question, you just do. I've got to be in California in five days. Listen, if we do this, you'll never have to see me again. I'm heading to California by way of Northwestern Ireland. So the scenic route, yeah? You're the first person that I like talking to. You don't happen to know who she's with on the motorcycle? He was the one she ran away with. She settled on me. She never forgot him. Just another person walking all over you. Leave me alone! I'm sick of 
this. So we're going to get this over with. And we're going to get away from each other. Is any of it true? Any of it real? That's the hard part. I'm trying to figure out if it's all a lie or just most of it. So are we going to finish this or what? Sometimes you're the pigeon, sometimes you're the statue. It's life. You're a very good man, Frank. That's why she fell for you. Don't let the past control you. Being loved by you <laughs> is the greatest gift in my life. get the sense from that we movie. Get the sense. We're in Ireland there. That's where it says. Finishes we're, we're, up we're, yeah, we're in Ireland and clearly the father and the son really just don't get on. The father is just permanently disappointed in the son and the father or the son thinks his dad is a weakling. He's always been walked over all his life and they come to Ireland. Now, again, it's funny how life goes, isn't it? We were talking about Wild Mountain Time and I gave out about all the Irish cliches in it. Yet in this movie, because both actors are American, and it's full of Irish cliches. You don't mind so much because it's not a patronising. It's more affectionate. So they go into a pub and, of course, somebody starts to sing because nobody's ever gone to, into a pub in Ireland and just had a pack of crisps or watched the match or anything like that. You know, everyone joins in in the sing song. <clears throat> and they seem to go to Larn at one stage by going via Athlone, Sligo and Donegal from Dublin. So I don't quite... So, understand that but if you can get over the geography and you know you can get over it i remember watching i think it was the movie calvary with uh shane smith of this parish and him saying well that beach doesn't lead to that road and i was going look i don't think it's important you gotta just sometimes you know go with the story and if you go with the story this is quite sweet and i said to the last movie was predictable and of course this is completely predictable too but more like a nice journey that you you know what the destination is and you can enjoy your way going to it now it stars john hawks who's an actor you might know his name but you'll know his face he's been in lots of movies and he was actually nominated for uh, an oscar for winter's bone i actually thought this was a really pleasant surprise if you can get over the little bit of diddly eye that exists in it but How are the accents? That, How are the, the, the accents okay? Well, yeah. well, they're American, so it's fine. And like, did they, they made the Irish the, as the Irish. Yeah, they had a good idea. Why not ca cast some Irish actors Irish. as Irish people? <laughs> even if they, I think there's one or two characters, you know, the priest, etc., who does go, Begara, sure, I knew your wife. But other than that, it's pretty good. <laughs> okay, okay. <clears throat> well, that's good, that's good. And uh, uh, that was new to me. I never heard of that. It's, uh, um, I hadn't heard of it till Monday, and it was a really <laughs> pleasant surprise. Absolutely. Now we've got something. Uh, I hope you don't like enclosed spaces because oh, this is a very yeah. claustrophobic film, I think. Very claustrophobic. very claustrophobic. Now, because it's French, I keep on wanting to say oxygen and then have Jean Michel Jarre <laughs> playing in my head <laughs> all through the movie. Well, I was going to say all through the movie for the first five minutes and then I was hooked in. Again, a big Netflix movie. So people will have seen it come up on their menus and so on. And this was actually supposed to be an English language movie. But when the director took over, they decided to do it in his native French. And in a weird way, I think it works much better because of, because of it. So Melanie Laurent, who is an actress I didn't know before, she wakes up in a sort of a medical pod. She doesn't remember who she is, why she's there, but she knows she must have had some sort of accident or something happened that she's in this sort of cryogenic pod. She's been frozen. She wakes up and there's a flashing warning sign saying there's only 35% of oxygen left. Her only companion is the sort of uh, her voice operated computer, like sort of like Alexa or Google. And like Alexa or Google, it is helpful, but only if you ask it the right question. If you don't say exactly what you need to say, it won't help you out at all. And it's incredibly frustrating. And one of the reasons I think it might have helped uh, with the French side, that sort of really angry French frustration that people, you know, you know exactly what I mean, comes across, I think, even so much more. Might come across as petulant in English. Now, I have to say, you can watch this in English because you just switched to uh, a dubbed version. But, uh, my, like, my French is not that good, as many people might tell you. But... Uh, um, I watched, it with sub I watched it with subtitles and uh, in the French language and I thought I was absolutely hooked. Again, it is a bit corny and there's kind of a sci-fi element that maybe not everyone will like and so on. 
but I, I was absolutely hooked. And there was a movie recently called Buried, who had kind of a similar start to the plot, and it's similarly claustrophobic. And I would be somebody, I'd get quite nervous in, in, in closed spaces and so on. So I found this edgier seat tense, but I really enjoyed it. I watched this last night, uh, in, instead of watching Liverpool. So uh, I was happy because we might mention that in a minute. Um, We've I, got I 20 re- seconds. Yeah, I, okay. well, I really enjoyed it. Well, we'll there's some Man United movies coming out. We'll maybe talk about them next week instead. But Oxygen, okay. definitely a thumbs up. End of sentence, thumbs up. A woman in a window, eh, maybe. Maybe if you want to. Okay, that's Carly on Movies this week. And uh, we'll be putting that up as a regular podcast and you can listen back to all your favourite movies. We'll be talking to them back here next Thursday. Bye. Bye.